So what this video is and what this video is not. This video is specifically for Ben Clark EMT students who have been given their sheet of EKG rhythms that they have to memorize. This video is not an explanation of the basics of 12 lead interpretation. This is not going into any more detail than the standard shapes of some of the basic EKG rhythms. So P wave means the SA node is firing in sinoatrial atrial node. You should know it's 60 to 100 beats a minute generally. The SA node is firing and stimulating both of the atria to contract. So I want you to remember that this P wave is associated with the atrium PR segment. It's the delay of the vertical impulses going from the SA node, which is up here in the right atrium, down into the AV, atrioventricular node. There's this little short delay. This delay allows the atria to contract and to empty their blood into the ventricles. The QRS. This is a big kahuna if you're from Ben Clark. In a nutshell, this is ventricular contraction. The right ventricle is sending blood to the lungs, left ventricle is sending uh, blood from the aorta to the body. So just I want you to associate this big spike with the big kahuna ventricles. T wave, well, the wave at the end, is basically the uh, recovery of the ventricles to reset their electrical potential back to normal. This is very complicated, but if you are interested in this, it is really fascinating. You can go to YouTube and you can search cardiac action potential. Things I want to point out, this normal sinus rhythm looks a lot different on a 12 lead depending on which section of the 12 lead we're looking at because you know each of those leads gives a different angle view of the heart so these are all normal sinus rhythm so i don't want you to think that because it isn't this exact shape means it's not a normal sinus rhythm these all look very similar you have these three rhythms on your sheet and i want you to know these are all sinus rhythms and sinus rhythm just means originating from the sinoatrial node this normal sinus rhythm you're gonna have a slight gap in between your t wave and your p wave this one the first degree block there's going to be a little bit larger of a gap in between the P wave and the QRS. So the PR segment that we talked about earlier, the reason for this is that someone might have a heart problems that could lead them to have a delay from the sinoatrial node impulses reaching the atrioventricular node. Remember the gap is after the P wave. And on the sinus rhythm, the gap is in between the T and the P. Now, the sinus bradycardia, your gap is also in between the T and P, but it's much longer than on the normal sinus rhythm. It's just stretched out. So your complexes are a little farther apart. But actually EKG strips, you will see that there are these tiny pink boxes inside a larger pink box. So each big box represents 0 0.2 seconds. Now in 60 seconds, there are 300 boxes. So 0.2 times 300 equals 60 seconds. So one box is 300, two boxes is 150, because two boxes together, or 0.4 seconds, occurs 150 times in 60 seconds. Why this is cool is because there are these numbers you can memorize, and it'll tell you really quickly how fast an EKG rhythm is. So you just basically remember the numbers 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43, 38, 33. A little complicated, but just knowing 300, 150, 100, 75, and 60, even just knowing those is, is very helpful. You try to find where a QRS complex kind of lines up with the start of one of the big boxes. So how many boxes are in between these two? One, two. Now look at this. One, two is 300, 150. So we're going to count, okay, from here, 300, 150. So this rhythm is approximately 150 beats a minute. This is sinus tachycardia. This EKG is actually the EKG of someone having a heart attack, but I'm just going to focus on the rate. We're going to find a QRS complex that lines up with the line, and we're going to count how many boxes. So starting here to here, 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43, 38. This rhythm is approximately 38, 40 or so beats a minute. This is a sinus bradycardia. Now, first degree block is defined by a PR interval that is 0.2 seconds or greater. Remember how I showed you guys that each of these boxes is 0.2 seconds. PR interval, which starts here, this is about one box wide. It should not be one box wide. It should be shorter than that. This is a first degree block. So up in Clark, you guys are being taught to always ask if the patient has a pulse. You guys are taught for your EKG page to write a normal sinus rhythm or a PEA or pulseless electrical activity. Well, all that pulse pulseless electrical activity means is that we're seeing this electrical activity that makes us think, okay, their heart's beating, but they actually don't have a pulse because their heart muscles aren't squeezing even though the electricity is still flowing. In this case, you would be doing CPR 
most rhythms can be pulses of electrical activity. The sinus tachycardia, quote unquote, could be a pulse of electrical activity, so get sinus bradycardia. Now, ventricular tachycardia can look very different depending on what type it is, but which part of the carrier complex does this most resemble? You know, this big spike, the big kahuna. We don't see any P waves, right? We're not seeing any um, atria contracting. This is just that the ventricles going boom, 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 boom. So that's why you see these really big spikes that just repeat. This is one example. This is torsade de point, which is basically just means twisting the points. It kind of looks like it's, it's like twisting around itself. Uh, remember we talked earlier about the boxes. Now we can look at this and say, um, so from here to here, that's roughly like 300. It's a little, a little less than 300, but that's how fast this ventricular tachycardia is. Just a side note, AEDs only analyze rhythm. So if they see a rhythm that looks like this, they're going to shock it, which means that if they do have a pulse, but they're in this rhythm, it's gonna shock it. Or if you have a patient that is in a moving ambulance, that can produce something on the EKG that looks something like this, maybe. AED sees anything that resembles a VTAC or a VFib, even if it's just because they're moving around in the ambulance, even though they're totally alert and conscious and alive, it's gonna shock it. So that's why don't do AEDs in a moving ambulance. Very similar to that, we have ventricular fibrillation for VFib. Again, what part of the complex does this most look like? It's gonna be the big kahuna, the big spikes, the QRS. But what this means, it's just all over the place. It just means the ventricles are just kind of shaking, basically. We have the progression is going to go something like this. We have our coarse ventricular fibrillation, and then that's gonna start deteriorating eventually into fine VFib, which is going from basically like, kind of like that to like that that eventually is going to deteriorate into a systole. A means without systole contraction. This is actually from the very first patient that I have pronounced dead on my own. And you can see, there is nothing happening. Now there are lots of different types of pacemakers and every pace rhythm might look a little different depending on the underlying rhythm, the type of condition the patient is in, what type of pacemaker they have. However, for the purposes of this test, I just want you to recognize that when you see these really weird, just like extremely narrow little spikes in the middle of this kind of odd looking rhythm, just, no, it's a pace rhythm. On a real call, if you're seeing something like this, you can ask if the patient has a pacemaker, but there are times that people have been looking at these rhythms and been confused and thought it was some really bad rhythm and then asked the patient, do you have a pacemaker? And they're like, yeah, and they're like, no big deal, this is fine. PVCs, premature ventricular contraction. All of this means is that in the middle of whatever rhythm this may be, it does not have to be a sinus rhythm like this. The ventricle out of the blue is just going, just kind of spasming. The type of PVC just depends on where in the ventricle it is originating from. That means there is multiple types of shapes that it can look like. So if PVCs all look exactly the same, exactly the same shape as this one, that means it's going to be unifocal. Uni means one. Focal is referring to the point at which the electrical activity is originating. Um, multifocal, this one. So we have this PVC, which is similar to this PVC, but then we also have this PVC and this PVC, and they're just coming from all different places. So that's multifocal as well. These are unifocal. This is also the same shape. So this is unifocal, this is unifocal. Next we have atrial fibrillation. But we have these spikes. These are our QRS complexes. Remember, this is the ventricle contracting. But we see it's like a super irregular rhythm. It's just kind of all over the place. And we're gonna look for a P wave, as always. We want to look for a P wave to see whether or not it's coming from the sinus. In this case, we don't see any P waves. It's just this weird squiggly line in all the spots where a P wave should be. And what that means is that instead of nice, even, regular contraction, like we see in these rhythms, where the atrium is just Contracting, contracting, contracting. It's supposed to. In this case, it's a squiggle, which means it's kind of just shaking. Same as like our refib. See how this is like the ventricle shaking? Well, in this case, it's the atrium shaking. That is it for now. If you have any questions, please either comment or message me personally. I love 12 leaps and EKGs, and I'm pretty good at interpreting them. So if you want any further detail or if you want an explanation of the 12 leaps you've seen or whatever, feel free to reach out.